You have to admire the Elementor team. When they identify a problem, they work to find a solution. Yes, Elementor currently has two problems that are being addressed. The first problem is the loss of confidence in the update process. Remember when Elementor 3 was released and a lot of things broke? The Elementor install base is so large now and there are so many third-party add-ons that it's hard for Elementor to roll out big changes without things breaking. The Elementor developers are nervous about it because they don't want to repeat and users are also cautious now about updating. The second problem is that page output is not optimized. Elementor does not compare well with some of the other builders, such as Oxygen and Gutenberg, when it comes to the rendered page output. To achieve the design and animation effects, Elementor adds a lot of div elements. The loading of CSS and JavaScript resources is also not optimized. The lack of optimization means that Elementor does not score as well as other builders on performance benchmark tests. Hi, this is David McCam for Elementor 360, and in this video I want to look at how the Elementor team is addressing these issues. Elementor 3.1 saw the introduction of the Experiments tab off of the Settings menu. Here's what the Experiments tab looks like on an established site that has a lot of Elementor content. You notice that they're all disabled. These experiments include optimized DOM output, improved asset loading, accessibility improvements, and landing pages. Now, optimized DOM output, this is addressing the issue of lots of divs or wrapper elements. Improved asset loading, this is addressing the issue of JavaScript and CSS files not being optimized on the front end. Now, this is that same Experiments tab on my test site that has no Elementor content. It's a new site. And you see that they've turned on some of these experiments by default. The optimized DOM output the accessibility improvements and the landing pages are on. And I notice that some of these experiments are labeled as beta and some as alpha. And that the beta ones are on and the alpha one isn't. Now you know Elementor has the option on the version control tab of the tools menu to enable the beta version of Elementor. And the beta version is a version that includes the experiments that are going to go into the live version. But in addition to the production version of Elementor and the beta version of Elementor, there's another version of Elementor called the Developer Edition. Unfortunately, they call this Elementor beta big sigh here, but the developer edition actually gives you access to development builds prior to them becoming betas. So some of the experiments that we might see in the developer edition may not actually make it into the beta or production versions of Elementor if the team decides that the experiment didn't work out. And if you look down here at the FAQs, there's an FAQ here, I'm already a beta tester, isn't this the same? Beta versions are the designated version for release. Developer edition versions will include extra features for testing purposes and will be rolled out gradually. So yeah, we see this is a third, a different version. All right, so let's go back to our test site. And they do say that the beta and developer editions should not be run on production websites. So keep that in mind. But like I said, this is a test site, so I'm comfortable doing that. You can see I just have the free core version of Elementor installed. So I click Add New, search for Elementor Developer Edition. Here it is. Install it activate it and as soon as I activate it it tells me that there is a new version of Elementor available this version is version 3.2.0 dev 4 okay so if it was a beta it would say beta there so there's a development version available 
and it warns you to back up before you upgrade. Now something else happened when we activated the developer edition and that is that the Elementor menu here got this dev tag and there's a new submenu option called developer edition. And if we look on this developer edition page, we see that we can update here as well. So I'll go ahead and update here and we'll get this new developer build. Okay, and we look and it says Elementor version 3.2.0-dev4. So we've activated the developer build. Let's go back now to the developer edition tab because there's one thing I want to show you. And here you can revert to the latest stable version. So after you do your tests, you can revert and reinstall the latest version of Elementor here production version. So let's look at the experiments tab here. We see we have these four options. Remember here on the established site we also had four but this one is running Elementor Pro. Here we only have Elementor Free enabled so far. So I'm going to go and I'm going to upload and activate the Pro version of Elementor. So I'm going to pause the video for a minute to do the install. Okay, so Elementor Pro is installed and I activated it by connecting it to my Elementor account. And you can see we have version 3.1.1. All right, now we have the developer edition. So you wonder, is there a developer edition also of Elementor Pro? And I kind of click around for a while and you eventually get notified by the update server that there's a new version. Okay, so the core version of Elementor, the dev version is 3.2.0 dev4. The development version of Elementor Pro is 3.2.0 dev5. So I'm gonna go ahead and update. And let's go back now to the experiments menu item and you see we have a new experiment here which is form submissions. And this gives you the option after a form is submitted to save the submissions in the database as a backup. So if something goes wrong with the email sending out of the form submission, you have a backup that you can go to to recover that information. Okay, so we've looked at the experiments tab and we've looked at the different versions of Elementor. Now let's run an experiment of our own. To do that, I'm going to start by marking all of the experiments as inactive. Let's turn them all off. Okay, so now I'm going to go create a new page. We'll call this Elementor Experiments. I'll publish that. And now let's go into the editor, the Elementor editor. What I want to do is just add a page here. Just use one of the pre-designed pages. Let's see. Here's one, this online course home page. So I'll insert that. And this is what we have. So I'm going to save that. And now go to view that page on the front. And here's our pre-designed home page. All right, so now I'm going to grab the URL for that. And I'm going to go to a site called GT Metrics where you can do some performance test. And I'm going to paste in the URL. And we'll test the page. And we get a C. So it's not great. We got a 61% performance score and a largest contentful paint of 2.9 seconds. So that's not great. Let's go back to our site. I want to take a look at the, the source code for the page. Let's zoom. Let's zoom in a little bit and go to the bottom. And you can see that there are 955 lines of code on this page. Go back in our zoom and close this. 
All right, now let's go back to the Elementor Experiments tab and let's turn on these two experiments related to performance. We'll save. Let's go back and view the page. Okay, so here we are on our page. Go back to GT Metrics and let's retest and see if there's any difference. Wow, we went from a C to an A. We're up to 94% performance and the largest contentful paint is down to 1.4 seconds. I'll admit I was surprised at how big of a change that is. Let's go back and take a look at the source code for the page now, the optimized page. And I'm going to scroll to the bottom and we can see that there are 886 lines of code. So many fewer lines of code and the code that was removed are all divs, uh, wrapper elements around some of the Elementor content. Okay, go back to our regular zoom. So that was a pretty dramatic change just by enabling the experiments. All right, so we've looked at the experiments, we've looked at the additions of Elementor, and we've run our own experiment. So now let's move on to the discussion and conclusion. The Elementor team has been faced with a couple of problems and they've tackled them head on. I admit that the different versions can seem a bit confusing, but what the team is doing is giving users and third-party developers a chance to test potential new features earlier. They've made the process about as easy as it can be. You can install the developer builds, switch experiments on and off, and revert back to the stable version when you're done. If you're using the stable version on a production site, there is the option to disable any experiment that might be causing an issue if, for example, a third-party plugin hasn't been updated yet. Some people feel that Elementor should not be asking its users to test. But remember that Elementor Core is the most feature-rich WordPress page builder that's available for free. So I personally don't have an issue with testing when I have time to do so. Of course, not everyone has the time to set up a testing site and run experiments, and that's okay, it's optional. I imagine that it took a bit of work to add the experiments options, and it also took a bit of thinking outside of the box. In most plugins, new features are only available in beta versions if the plugin offers a beta version, and you don't have the ability to turn off the features that might cause an issue. You can see that in this case, with my experiment, the optimization of the page really worked. The results might not be so dramatic for all pages and content, but what's obvious is that Elementor is moving in the right direction. My understanding is that the Elementor team has further optimization experiments planned. So this isn't the last word on the subject. So this has been my look at Elementor experiments, the developer version of Elementor, and running a test to see how the optimization experiments impact site performance. There's a text version of the video available on the Elementor 360 website, along with other walkthroughs and reviews and resources. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching.